the ayes have it. I call on government orders of the day numbers 2 to 24. Senior Courts Bill, third reading. District Court Bill, third reading. Judicial Review Procedure Bill, third reading. Interest on Money Claims Bill, third reading. Electronic Courts and Tribunals Bill, third reading. Arbitration Amendment Bill, third reading. Bills of Exchange Amendment Bill, third reading. Building Societies Amendment Bill, third reading. Children, Young Persons and Their Families Amendment Bill, third reading. Companies Amendment Bill number two, third reading. Contractual Remedies Amendment Bill, third reading. Copyright Amendment Bill number two, third reading. Courts Remote Participation Amendment Bill, third reading. Criminal Procedure Amendment Bill, third reading. Employment Relations Amendment Bill number four, third reading. Family Courts Amendment Bill, third reading. Insolvency Amendment Bill, third reading. Local Government Rating Amendment Bill, third reading. Property Law Amendment Bill, third reading. Remuneration Authority Amendment Bill, number two, third reading. Resource Management Amendment Bill, third reading. Tutori Whenua Māori Amendment Bill, third reading. Trans Tasman Proceedings Amendment Bill, third reading. Any further bits? <laughs> The Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, I move that the, the bills divided from the Judicature Modernisation Bill be now read a third time. And I'm sure the House is delighted that I can express it uh, in that shortened form. Uh, Mr Speaker, New Zealand has a strong and independent justice system that serves New Zealand as well. But its legislation needs to be more accessible and better supported by modern technology. The changes we're making in this legislation will make our courts more transparent, and allow them to be modernised while preserving their traditions and upholding the rule of law. At 23 separate bills across more than 1,000 pages, this is one of the largest pieces of legislation Parliament has ever dealt with in one go. It replaces one of New Zealand's oldest statutes still in force, the 108-year-old Judicature Act, and modernises the principal statute that governs our court. Courts. This overhaul is made necessary by rapid changes in both society and technology and a need to ensure that our justice system keeps up with the demands of the 21st century. This legislation forms part of the government's commitment to making sure our justice system can be more flexible and modern and that it better meets the needs of New Zealanders. It will increase flexibility for court users, enhance the clarity and transparency of the court system, bring about more modern ways of working and allow courts to transact electronically in the future. The legislation we're considering today includes five new acts and 18 amendment acts. The key provisions follow the government's consideration of the 2012 Law Commission report on its review of the Judicature Act. The legislation retains much of the existing provisions of our court statutes, but in more modern language and in a rearranged format. The legislation also introduces important new provisions. Mr Speaker, I'd like to turn first to the bills that will become the five new acts. Firstly, the Senior Courts Bill brings together in a single act the statutory provisions for the High Court, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court that were formally set out in the Judicature Act 1908 and the Supreme Court Act 2003. These provisions will be expressed in modern language and be made more accessible. The High Court rules, which regulate the practice and procedure for civil proceedings in that court, remain part of the new Senior Courts Act, but will be published separately under the Legislation Act 2012 as the High Court Rules 2016, and as if they were a separate statutory instrument. This will make them more accessible to all court users. The process for amending or replacing them will not change. The District Courts Bill continues the District Courts as a single District Court, while retaining its specialist divisions of the Family Court, the Youth Court and the Disputes Tribunal. The District Court of New Zealand will be Australasia's largest court, hearing more than 200,000 matters every year. The general civil jurisdiction of the District Court increases from $200,000 to $350,000. This is the first revision of this limit since 1992. As a result, more parties will be able to choose to litigate in the District Court instead of the High Court. The Judicial Review Procedure Bill relocates the Judicature Amendment Act 1972 into a standalone Act. This new Act continues the important constitutional statutory provisions under which an affected person may check the legality of the exercise of power by the Executive and other public bodies. 
The Interest on Money Claims Bill replaces the existing statutory provisions for the award of interest on money claims with a more comprehensive scheme. This new scheme will both deter prolonged disputes and ensure creditors are more fairly compensated. The proposed Interest on Money Claims Act is based on the recommendations of a 1994 Law Commission report, and its implementation is long overdue. The Electronic Courts and Tribunals Bill enables greater use of electronic documents and proceedings, allowing people who use and work in New Zealand's courts and tribunals to benefit from modern technology by, by, by being able to create, submit and receive court documents electronically instead of on paper. The 18 amendment bills will amend other statutes by relocating the existing provisions from the Judicature Act and the District Courts Act to where they'll be more accessible, by extending to the specialist courts the new accountability provisions included in the Senior Courts and District Courts Bill to ensure consistency across the judiciary, and by consequentially amending a number of related statutes. Mr Speaker, this major revision of our court statutes ensures a greater degree of consistency for common provisions. This is particularly important as a number of new provisions have been introduced to improve the transparency and accountability of our court system. These provisions include the requirement for the Attorney General to publish information on the judicature, uh, judicial appointment process, even where the Attorney General does not have responsibility for nominating appointments to a particular bench. For each court, the head of bench will be required, in consultation with the Chief Justice, to develop and publish certain information on reserve judgments, as well as guidelines to assist judges to decide if they should recuse themselves from hearing a proceeding. The legislation distinguishes three categories of information generated by the courts and the Ministry of Justice, and clarifies the access conditions for each of those categories. The legislation also enables the sharing of certain court record information between agencies through approved information sharing agreements prescribed by the Privacy Act. This sharing of information will help government agencies to provide better services to New Zealanders by being able to identify risk, to spot patterns and to tailor services to suit. The legislation also clarifies contempt of court provisions and the restrictions on commencing or continuing proceedings deemed to be without merit. Mr Speaker, the passing of this legislation marks a significant step for enabling New Zealand's courts to provide modern, accessible, people-centred justice services. I believe we are well served by our independent courts. Our courts and the judges and the judicial officers who work in them ensure that the rule of law prevails in our society. They are a vital part of our democracy. Many people have contributed to developing this important legislation. I want to thank those members of the community, the legal profession and the judiciary who made submissions and of course the members of the Justice and Electoral Select Committee who worked diligently to examine the legislation. I'd also like to acknowledge the work of the Parliamentary Council who have done an extraordinary job with such a large piece of legislation and my own officials in the Ministry of Justice who have put uh, countless hours into this important piece of work. Mr Speaker, it's with great pleasure that I commend these 23 bills to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr.